What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust Industrial video. I'm Austin and today we're talking about how to auto transfer loot during a raid. Uh, I've got two versions of this, the, the no HBHF uh, version of this and the with HBHF version of this just to, to uh, cater to those who like using these and those who don't. Um, so the non-HBHF sensor, uh, we'll just kind of tour it really quick. Um, it has a stage one and stage two. And what this means is the stage one is, 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 is where the raider would encounter first followed by stage two, they would they would encounter second. And, you know, this is important. So it, it assumes, you know, that the system requires that the, the raider encounter these in the correct order or else it doesn't work. So behind each of these twigs, I've got shotgun traps. Um, shotgun traps can detect and fire through twig. Um, and so the idea is that they encounter stage one, say very early on and during their raid of the base, since most players door raid, this would be, you know, very close to the front of your base doors. Uh, and then this would be somewhere down the line uh, with a, you know, somewhat of a distance between these two to give uh, whatever you have in your loot box that you're trying to transfer to your secret loot box, which we'll cover in a second, uh, time to transfer. And we'll kind of talk about transfer times here in a moment. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna say is that, you know, I have this stuff on the front of the twigs. Um, that's just for the tutorial. You would wanna put this stuff on the back of the twigs. So it also requires you to have access to the back of these twigs. Um, so you'll, you would have to build accordingly if you're gonna use a system as I have designed it. So first we'll talk about just the components as far as the electrical components. We've got a uh, branch, we've got two branches, a blocker, and the, I guess, you know, technically the conveyor, uh, but then transitioning into the industrial components, we have the conveyor and I have two um, storage adapters. Now this is gonna, I, I'm using one conveyor as an example. Obviously you could set up you could daisy chain two conveyors and have you know a faster transfer if you need to do stacks of something bigger, um, or you could have multiple boxes daisy chained together. So this is just like the you know the, the core idea is that box to conveyor to secret box um, of the of the two boxes uh, they are what I'm calling the raid protected loot box. So this would be a box in your base that you just use and you keep things that you really don't want a raider to get a hold of or you want to try and and save should you be raided. And then there has to be a destination for that protected loot and so this box here and alongside with this blocker would be in some secret room somewhere or you know through quarter wall gaps or whatever you know you're gonna have to get clever where you put this uh maybe a maybe a, a anti-grief you know structure on the outside of your base wherever this is this is the box that the stuff will transfer to if a raider enters the base so we're gonna go ahead and just do the setup real quick from a power source you're gonna send six units of power and we're just gonna follow that over to here uh, and that is going to run to this this uh, branch switch here um, from your power source this branch switch has to be on the twig the idea is that the reason that there's stuff on the twig is that you want to eliminate the evidence of what's happened so we'll we'll uh we'll kind of cover that when we go for testing phase but so we have this power source going in this branch on the twig again when you're on when you're on twig try to avoid running lines past the holes in case people see through them that's you know maybe not totally necessary but something to think about um, the, and so we're gonna follow the red lines here just for power. So then the power out specifically of this branch, um, you're gonna set this branch to two. So, so really you're gonna leave it in its default configuration. It's power out, it's gonna run to the power in on this conveyor here. And you're gonna pass through that power here uh, out of the conveyor over to this branch on the first twig. Again, it has to be on the twig. In order for the system to activate, this branch must be destroyed, that's its purpose. Uh, and then its output, this green line here is running to the blocker. So we've got the power coming in here. You should have two units of power arriving at this branch here uh, so that it'll pass, it's gonna need one, it's gonna pass one. You only need one to come over here to this blocker here. So we have one uh, unit of, of power arriving here and then that's it. So then from the branch out of this uh, original, you know, power distribution branch here, we've got two coming out, arriving at this blocker here. It uses one, it's gonna pass the other one and it's gonna run to the turn on specifically of this conveyor. So of the inputs uh, on this conveyor, we only use the turn on course, we're going to use the power input, we're going to use the pass through output, um, but we're not going to use the filter pass, we're not going to use the filter fail, and we're not going to use the uh, turn off back there, which I'm not really highlighting. There it is. We're not going to use that either. So this blue line out of the blocker runs to the turn on of the conveyor. And so as far as electrical, that's it. It's actually pretty simple. And so uh, for the conveyor setup, you're just going to want to set now. So here's what I've done is I've set this, I'm, you know, part of the whole idea here is that you're trying to manipulate the Raider into um, seeing these boxes and ignoring this box. So what I've done is I've put 
these burlap items. You can do whatever you want, get clever with what you put in here. And you're gonna filter out those items as decoy. So I've got the, all these burlap items here and I've set this to the exclude listed items. So what this conveyor is gonna do is it's going to transfer everything it can see in this box except for the items that I'm telling it to ignore. And so those are the decoy items. So you can get clever and put whatever, maybe even leave some guns and some ammo, maybe, maybe leave some cheap guns in there even. Um, you're just gonna leave some stuff in that box as a decoy and you're gonna transfer the rest of it to some location here. And so what's gonna happen is, is that when I, when the, the Raider is detected, it's gonna shoot out this twig here, it's gonna break that branch. Uh, that branch is then gonna release this blocker, which is gonna turn on this uh, conveyor, which is gonna start conveying everything. Um, once the player then reaches this uh, twig, and again, all this would be on the back side of the twig, so they wouldn't see this, uh, that twig's gonna break, and it's gonna break that conveyor, which is also going to destroy the lines, and so you can hide, it's gonna just destroy this power block here. So you're gonna hide everything about where this is because you're gonna destroy all the connections to it. And that's the idea. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna walk past stage one to stage two and we're going to demonstrate how it works. All right, so I'm going to deauthorize myself from this TC. There we go. And so now, uh, as and again, these are just spaced as they are just for this, this, this example, but let's say a raider blows into the front door, they encounter this, it fires off some rounds, breaks that, now you can see that that, I'm not gonna walk in front of it yet, but you can see that that, that conveyor has turned on and is starting to, con to, is to transfer the items because I've released the blocker. And the whole point of destroying this branch is to release that blocker. So I've released that blocker and now it's transferring items out. And so depending on what you have in here is gonna be what it, how long it takes for it to, to transfer. Now, for what the kind of stuff I have in here, this isn't gonna take very long because the conveyors have a pretty good transfer rate, which means it's not really gonna be a big deal. So as long as as long as this stuff isn't like, you know, they run into this and this box is right in front of them and it's immediately being, you know, they can get to it, uh, then it's fine. So you'll notice here it's finished, it's finished transferring already and we have left the burlap. So if someone came in here, you could even have a sign over this that says, you know, uh, clothes and just have some leftover clothes in there. So they're gonna see that and ignore it. So then if they go a little farther, this next one goes off and it destroys this next piece. And now I've destroyed the link between, you know, this box and this hidden box, which is somewhere, you know, hidden where hopefully they can't find it or, you know, what, you know you're know, gonna have to get clever with that. But so all the stuff in here, minus what I told it is now in here in some secret spot. And so this could even be, you could even depot this into just using quarter walls through honeycomb into some back spot somewhere and put a decoy turret behind the quarter wall so that it looks like you had a turret back there or whatever, but you could run the pipes through there, they're gonna get destroyed and you could depot this into a box that no one can access if you just don't want them to get it. You know, you could kind of, you know, pull that move. So um, that's pretty much it for that one. And now we're gonna move on to the next one. All right, so now the version with the HBHF sensor, um, this is actually in just so much easier than this first version, um, but it does require the use of an HBHF sensor. So for some of you, you know, you know they're kind of loud, they can hear them. Um, there are some, there is a little bit of a weakness here, but it could be overcome as long as you're careful how you place it and we'll cover that. Um, so you're gonna have to have an HBHF sensor and you're gonna wanna set it to exclude others, include authorized because you want it to ignore people authorized on the TC and you want it to transfer power when it detects people not authorized on the TC. So exclude others, include otherwise. Um, the HBHF sensor, you know, whereas stage one over there was a twig with a shotgun traps, the HBHF sensor is stage one for this version of it. So this would be placed somewhere early on in the base, you know, as they come through. So what you want to be careful of is that you want to make sure this doesn't get destroyed before it detects a player. So it's very, very critical that you install this in a way that as they're raiding, they're forced to come into contact with it. So if they destroy it, you know, once 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 it's they've come into contact with it and, and it registers them, it doesn't matter if they destroy it at that point, but it has to have a chance to destroy them. So when you do this, you're gonna have to set this up in a way that you can guarantee that they will not, you know, accidentally blow this up while raiding. So think about that while it's happening. Um, as far as electrical components, that's literally it. It's just the HBHF sensor. This is a very, very easy one to do. Um, the only other electrical component is the industrial conveyor. Um, it's I've just set it up the exact same way as the other one where I have these decoy items. Again, you can choose whatever you like. Uh, and I have it set to exclude listed items so that it transfers everything but the items that I've set in there and filtered. And again, we have some generic loot box just full of stuff that I wanna have transferred should somebody 
enter the base. So, uh, and then this next part here is the exact same as the one over there, except that because of the way this thing is set up, um, we don't have to put the, uh, we don't have to have a blocker. We don't have to have any of those switches because the way this thing works, it just passes right through an HPHF sensor anyway. So this is this is probably the easiest one if, if you're trying to go for, for quick. Um, other than that, it's the same thing. We've got two, two uh, industrial, the, two adapters for the boxes. Obviously you could have more boxes with adapters strung together to have more stuff. You might, you could put two, you could put another conveyor and have double conveyors if you wanna, you know, like increase the amount of transfer for stacked items like like ores and whatever. Uh, but as far as like stuff like this, one conveyor is generally just fine because of the size of the stack sizes. Um, that's really just the only thing you have to think about. And then once again, same thing, we have a secret loot room box. Uh, we have the raid protected loot box. Um, a note on both of these is that the order of these are set up for demonstration purposes, which I'll cover over there. So you wouldn't necessarily have it this way, but I'll show you that in the actual example. So that's pretty much it. Um, the actual power is incredibly cheap. You just need three units of power. And the only reason you need three is because you have to have, if you trace that one over here, that goes, that uh, power source goes straight to the power input right here on the conveyor. So we have three arriving, it uses one. We need to pass two. Um, and so this, this electrical pass through, if you follow the power, electrical pass through here runs over to the, the uh, power in on your HBHF sensor. And so it requires one, but you need one to pass. And so you need, that's why you have to have two arriving here so that you can pass one here. And that's this green line. That's simply running to the turn on of the uh, sensor. And so of the conveyor, excuse me. And so that's it. As far as these other sensors go, or other inputs and outputs go, we don't use filter pass. We don't use filter fail. We don't use the turn off. We just use the power in, the pass through and the turn on, that's it. And that's literally all you have to do to set this one up. This is incredibly easy. Uh, same thing back here. I have a, a uh, shotgun trap with a few rounds in it. Obviously you put more in it to break this, to hide the evidence. Cause we wanna make sure that this pipe here uh, does not, it's not found. We don't have to, want them to be able to follow this pipe over to this thing, so we need this to break. And so again, this would, of course, these are on the fronts right now. Everything is on the front of the twig. You would have this on the back of the twig and we'll cover that then. So what I'm gonna do now is deauthorize myself and I'm going to, so now once I become in range of that HBHF sensor, you'll see right now as I approach, uh, eventually it's gonna detect me. And there it went, it detected me. So now it is transferring the loot uh, from that box here, it's already started. And so as, a, as an example, if I delete this, it doesn't matter that that is still running because the HVHF sensor is powered down, down, it's down circuit of that conveyor. So even if they destroy it, as long as it detects them for a second and turns that on, it doesn't matter if it gets destroyed after that. And so this thing is still transferring. Okay, so it's almost done. So as long as there's a little bit of gap between when they're detected and when they come into contact with that panel so that these have time to, to convey, which they've done, there you go, it's empty minus the decoy items that I put in there and that's it. So now if I want to, you know, they, they, the radar keeps going and they come in contact with this, you know, they take some rounds, whatever, um, this stuff breaks and what it does is it gets rid of that evidence. So now we don't know where, the, you know, this, this box is now disconnected from the system and it's hidden somewhere and it has all your, has all your loot in it. So. That is it for the with HBHF. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is a generic base example of this. I've set this up with the uh, no HBHF version, um, just because this is the slightly more complicated one. So if you wanted to use the the with HBHF, it'd be much simpler to hook up. So first we're just gonna uh, tour it really quick, just so we can see, you know, what I did. Um, obviously this is not a valid base design. This is just for the tutorial. Um, and I just have basically three chambers here. We've got the, the stage one, stage two. Obviously, again, these could not be next to each other. This would be in the entryway somewhere. This would be farther in on the base. If you wanted to sub the, the width HBHF, you would just, instead of this here, you would have the HBHF sensor in here. Uh, and that's it, you would omit this stuff and then just have the stage two as designed as I showed there earlier. But again, this is the no HBHF. So this is the stage one chamber, stage two chamber that would be separated. And then this is sort of a generic room that I'm using. So, you know, you wouldn't, there's two ways to think about this. You could actually like transfer the loot out of your TC area um, so that once they get to there, they're empty. You could do that. Um, in my design, I'm going with misdirection. So the idea is that I've got this loot room that when they en encompass, you know, or encounter, I should say, uh, they're gonna find just generic stuff. They won't find the guns. They'll find the, the, the burlap stuff. They'll find the seeds. They'll find, you know, other seeds. They're gonna find spears. You know, none of this good stuff would be in here. Um, and so, uh, 
back here, you know, this is the access point to the back one. For stage one, the way I did this one, the way you would do it is you would come in here before you built this, you would, you know, put the twig up. Uh, if you just stand to one side, you can uh, place the branch sideways like this and just pla place it just slightly below the lip so you can't see it up in this corner. And then you would, you know, F1 out and come back over here. And what you can do is you can set a box down uh, next to the twig like so and just from this top point up here you can access the branch out and the power in which is what you need um, to get in here so um, you can just do it that way and then once it's done break the box pick up the box whatever and you're good to go um, so and then so that's the stage one part stage two of course you access back here but because it's right before this room in my case it doesn't matter if they once this breaks if they go behind here and blow these doors up it's the same they get to the same spot with slightly with a slightly more expensive route. Um, the important thing is that these things get destroyed. This is the, the same thing I set up, identical, except for, and I'll cover this, I've got two lines coming in, a combiner um, into this conveyor instead of straight piped like I did on the example outside. And the reason for that is I've set up a, you know, a storage loot room here that is a decoy loot room. And what I did was, and I, knew, I didn't use any admin things, I didn't use any clipping. Um, I placed the first box here on the left and then I crawled back in here and I just placed the second box from back here, put the two storage adapters on and uh, used the industrial out of this one and ran it to the industrial in on this one to connect these two boxes down here only. Um, and then you can just put your stuff in a box to you know F1 out and come back over here. I did the same thing for the top. I just placed one box and then I went in and I placed the second box back here, hooked up the adapters and ran the out of this one to the in on this one. And then that was it. Um, so that's how, and I didn't connect them top to bottom because once the system goes off and that's destroyed and it, it, it takes all its pipes and wires with it, I don't want a connecting pipe, you know, sneaking out and coming down to this other set. I want these to appear as they are. I mean, I would even leave this door open because it's such an unimportant loot room that I'm not even going to close the door. You know, misdirection is key here if you do it the way that I do it. So anyway, uh, because these are boxes, and this is the cool thing, you can put storage adapters on the back and you can access them, the outs and the ins, from through the box because you can run pipe through the containers that you're hooking them to. Uh, and if you hold shift, you can run them on top of them. And so because of that, you can see through them, which means I can access these industrial outs from here. And that's what this line is here. I've accessed this industrial out and I hooked this green line up and it ran this pipe, ran to this side of the, the, uh, the combiner. Um, the yellow uh, one is coming out of the the out of this bottom one here. So that's coming out there and running into the combiner and then the combiner out here is running to the input on the conveyor. And that's the only difference between what I did out there and this is I just hooked up these four boxes in a way that once this is destroyed, these pipes will be gone. Uh, and so that's pretty much it. The power I'm running off of this battery over here, this battery is hooked to a single solar panel up on the roof. Um, and I've done this sort of misdirection thing where I put a simple light in the center of the room. I hooked a switch to it and I ran this line, sort of lazily ran this line up, you know, didn't follow the wall to make it look like I did it. And so once once this wire has been destroyed, uh, it'll look like I just didn't hook this light up or I don't have it hooked up for whatever reason. Um, so I'm trying to just do things to make it look like I'm doing something else. The room itself is is nondescript. I don't have any important stuff in here. A lot of the boxes are empty. You know, I, in here I've got some generic stuff in this locker. Um, just to kind of bait them with, um, that's it. So if they came in here, they wouldn't spend a lot of time in here and there's no reason for them to be firing rockets or anything around this room, as long as there's no, you know, nothing, nothing enticing them to do so. Um, so that's pretty much it. So once this stuff all runs, you know, this is the, the loot, the raid protected loot, like I did in the example. And that output pipe there from the conveyor is running behind this. This is how I did this just as an example, uh, into this secret loot room that would be in the honeycomb. I've removed a wall for you to see it. And so behind here is the locker. There's a door behind it. And since you can clip stuff through the doors, you have to be able to do that. Uh, this is where the loot's going to go. And I've got four boxes over here. This red pipe here is coming from the conveyor in that second, that, that, that stage two area. And then beyond that, it's just these, this box is, you know, chained to this one. This one goes this one over here and the output of this one goes this one. So I've just got three daisy chained together with an input for all three here and that's it. And so of course, I'm sure you guys can come up with, you know, much more clever ways of hiding this, maybe quarter walls and, you know, putting things through quarter walls. One idea is to take a quarter wall and put a, put a turret or an empty shotgun 
shotgun trap behind it and so that there's a reason for the quarter wall to be there but you can't see say maybe a quarter wall above it um, you could run to run something to that so uh, anyway that's where it's running to and so I'm going to close everything up here and I'm going to so I'll show you actually here the real quick the filters I went a little farther this time I got the burlap like I said the seeds I showed you right the, the spears and so however you want to do that you know you can put your decoy items maybe even some guns leave leave, leave some revos behind or something I'm gonna shut all that up and then I'm going to deauthorize myself from the TC here and I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna raid it so so let's say you know you come in if a raider were to fire rockets here destroy that that twig it's not going to matter so if they come in they engage with it it's going to go off like it's supposed to or they blew it up themselves but now that they've done that they've released this this conveyor and it is starting to convey the items uh, based on how i you know i showed you in the example out, out there and so it's conveying everything that's in this this box here it's already finished box one it's making it through the ammo as you can see the bigger the stacks uh, the more passes it needs so you can you can counteract that you know these are already empty so we're all we're waiting for is this one so you can counteract that by by adding another conveyor so that you know that targets maybe the ammo specifically you could do that you could just daisy chain another conveyor in right here um, very very simple you just add a single unit of power to the whole thing so not a big deal um, you'll notice that because i hooked this up straight from the battery and skipped the that well actually you can't see but this is the the because i'm not authorized i'll show you that here in the end but it the, the active usage is only four if you do it this way uh and once this thing is done which looks like it's almost done so not, not a couple of passes uh it, you know then then and, and in the meantime the idea is is that the raider is continuing to raid the base they're going through and blowing up the doors they gotta blow up so so the time it takes for them to get through this door you know, like if I were to raid through that door and come in there now, it's gonna it's gonna break all that and stop the conveyor. So if I were, let's see if it's done. Uh, it's done. So, um, oh no, up here, it's almost done. So had I gone right there, it would have left this behind. So that's not such a big deal, um, but that highlights the idea that depending on the stacks you have, so now it's done, depending on the stacks you have, uh, you'll want to maybe add a second conveyor to account for those. So now that that's done, let's say they get to this point, it's gonna break this. They're gonna have to deal with the shotgun trap. Obviously, you'd put a lot more ammo in these, um, and and it's done. So now, if they were to keep on raiding, maybe they see this. You know, maybe they even raid through those doors for no reason. Just waste some time. Once they're in here, you can see that all they're gonna find in here are what you chose to leave behind. But because you know you destroyed all the evidence, it's hard for them to see where it goes. And all the lines, importantly, this is the most important part, is that all the evidence of where things going is gone including it was unhooked from this battery, which now just looks like a little simple light system that I didn't finish hooking up. And so if you were to come back through here, everything, the line, all those wires that remember the, the blue or the, the blocker, I should say, is back here. So they don't know where it is. And everything from those boxes has now been transferred into these boxes. And so you can, you know, this could be, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, I just did the honeycomb thing with the bag to bag in, you know, maybe you could one last stand or whatever. Um, you know, the risk obviously is they could blow this up or, you know, if they get, if you don't have a, an anti-grief TC, they could pick this up. Um, but, you know, you don't have to do this. You can do a whole ton of ideas to try and hide this, but you know, whatever it is you try, decide to do, the idea is that you can move loot if you can successfully hide where it is you sent the loot. Uh, so that, folks, is just about all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later.